Do you want to upgrade the audio system and the functionality on your Harley Davidson Road Glide? Note Cycles has the perfect plug and play head unit bundle for you. The new Soundstream Reserve HD HU.14SI unlocks technology that you've never had before right at your fingertips on your Harley Davidson motorcycle. The 7 inch capacitive touchscreen gives you the full functionality of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, your favorite navigation app such as Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. You also have the ability to view real time diagnostics on the gauges screen, such as battery voltage, RPM, intake temperatures, and even the twist grip percentage. Also available in the vehicle information screen is a readout of your TPMS system, as well as a check engine light. With that said, let's get started on the disassembly so we can get our brand new Soundstream unit installed. First step in the process on this road glide is we're gonna remove the speaker grills. There's a screw fastener hidden behind there. So we'll go ahead and grab a panel tool out of the toolbox and pop off the speaker grill. Our recommendation here is that you get a plastic panel tool because we are working near the painted surface. So we're gonna start on the inside. Just pry it up enough where we can get our fingers under. And when we flip it over here, you'll see there's these two retaining clips and then this tab just slides under the outside of the fairing. So that's all we're doing is removing these and sliding it out of the way. The screw that we're gonna be removing is right here towards the outside of the fairing. So we're gonna grab our T27 Torx. Another fastener to remove on the side of the fairing. If we go from where we just removed the screw from the speaker housing, follow straight down here. You see we have the wind deflector not the top screw, but the screw all the way at the bottom next to the gas tank. We're gonna remove that one next with a T20 Torx. And we're gonna repeat this same process on the other side of the bike. The next screw that we're gonna to need to remove is located right here behind the turn signal. You can see the silver screw. There's gonna be one on each side of the bike. To remove that, we're gonna use a 3 16 hex bit on a ratchet. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other turn signal. Now we're gonna to move to the front of the bike and before we go any further, we're gonna grab a moving blanket. I'm gonna go ahead and place it over the front fender just to protect the paintwork. Continue this process, we're gonna use a 1 8 hex and there's two screws here that hold this side of the windshield and two more on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and remove all four and also take care that the fairing doesn't come off in the process. these support brackets out of the way now we can go ahead and lift off the windshield plastic we'll set that back here on the bench next to come off is the fairing vent here simply just pulls up and pops right out you can see it's held in with these two plastic retaining clips go ahead and set this on the bench at this point our outer fairing is almost ready to come off on this bike we have two little wiring harnesses right here that we need to go ahead and disconnect so we're going to release the tabs on those and now the outer fairing is free of the bike. Next up on the items to remove is this black support bracket that goes across the back of the radio. There's two screws here. We're gonna grab our T25 Torx bit. It's a good idea when you're removing these parts off of your bike. When you set them in your toolbox or you set them on the bench, leave them all together so that way you know which screws go back to which pieces. Now we're getting really down to the heart of the radio. So at this point, we'll go ahead and disconnect all of the wiring off of the back of the radio. Okay, now that all of our wiring's disconnected, the last step in getting the old radio out are the four bolts on the sides, one on each corner that hold the radio into the motorcycle. Again, we're gonna go back to our 3 16 hex on a ratchet. Now we have all of those loosened up. We can go ahead and lift the radio straight up and out of the motorcycle. Wanna be sure to grab the four bolts out of here because we will need those to put the new radio in. Now it's time for the star of the show, the Soundstream Reserve HD HU14SI. 
this is gonna drop right back in. As you can see, it almost looks exactly like the factory radio as far as build and size. Soundstream's put a lot of energy and effort into making this factory fit, plug and play, drop in ready. And uh, we're about to show you that here. It simply just slides down into place. Make sure all our wires are out of the way. We're gonna grab our four bolts and go ahead and just put them back in there hand tight for right now. Uh, we're gonna do a function check and then we'll button everything back up. Also included in your box is the harness and the Maestro RR module. So let's grab that and we'll get that hooked up. One of the great things about this head unit bundle is that the wiring harness is plug and play and it's ready to go. You'll see here the Maestro RR module. This is the brains of the whole setup. This is what communicates between the radio and the motorcycle integrates everything. It gives you the ability to see your vehicle data and all of the different diagnostic functions. When you receive this from us, the module itself will already be programmed based on the year and model that you selected at checkout. So there was no updating. There's no sort of modification that needs to be made. This is literally just gonna plug in and we're gonna be good to go. So to do that, it's really simple. You see we have a factory looking connector on each end. So we're gonna start with this connection here. This is gonna go right to the back of the radio. This customer also already has an aftermarket amplifier. There's a lot of extra wiring going on in here, but that's all right, we'll be able to work around it. So we're gonna line the connector up. We're gonna push it in till the locking tab hooks and we're gonna push it to the top dead center position. The female side of the connector here is gonna to go to the factory plug that we disconnected from the factory radio. So we'll line the connector up again, swivel that until it locks into place. At this point, we have a few more connections to make. Let's find our factory USB connector. It's gonna be this black cord with a silver connector and the black plastic on it. The next spot over is gonna be the AM FM radio, which is this other black cable with the white connector. Also included in your bundle in a separate bag is gonna be the microphone. If you choose to mount this to your bike, all you need to do is plug in the headphone jack to the black headphone cord here. Using this factory supplied microphone is gonna give you the option to use your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto voice commands, uh, reply to text messages, or make phone calls. Uh, again, this is only if you want to, but our recommendation is to run this up and place it on top of the fairing, uh, somewhere behind the windshield, just to cut down on as much wind noise as possible. For this installation, the customer opted not to do that, so we're gonna go ahead and remove it and continue on. Let's talk about another option at checkout, and that is to add or maintain a Sirius XM account uh, and to be able to get XM radio through your new Soundstream head unit. Uh, if you select this at checkout, you will receive both the Sirius tuner itself as well as the supplied antenna. I'm gonna cover real quick how to install that. If you look at the back of the radio, opposite the side of the main harness, past the RCAs, you're gonna find a little black plug. If you remove that rubber plug, you'll find the connector for the Sirius tuner. The tuner plug is keyed, so it will only go in one direction. The supplied antenna does have a magnetic mount um, now, if you, if you have some sort of magnetic plate somewhere you can mount it, we always suggest that you put this on the outside of your fairing just so that it has the best reception of the satellite. Uh, so another option may just be a small piece of double-sided tape uh, stuck into or onto the fairing vent. Uh, again, just somewhere discreet that's out of the way, but gives the best reception and you have plenty of cable to do that. Now that we have all of our connections made that we're gonna use for this install, before we go ahead and put the outer fairing and everything back together, let's go ahead and do a quick function check, make sure that everything's working like it should, and then we'll button everything back up. All right, let's go ahead and we'll put the bike in ignition power. You can see that the sound stream instantly powers up. Got the nice logo there. Have a few initial settings that we need to go ahead and set. So we're gonna select our language first, we're in English. And we're gonna select our location, and we're here in Frederick, Maryland, so we're gonna pick America, hit the check mark. Now let's find an actual radio station here. <laughs> Perfect. Volume works. So everything seems to be functioning as it should at this point. One important note is, like this customer has an aftermarket amplifier, or when we started the bike up, you can hear some statically background noise. So what we will eventually end up doing is we'll have to go to the amp, 
and reset the gains and reset the parameters since it was programmed to the factory head unit and now we've changed out the head unit. Uh, but as far as basic functionality, everything seems to be working as it should. So we'll go ahead and finish up the installation. At this point, we'll go ahead and tidy up any of the wires or harnesses that we have just to make sure that we have plenty of room for when we put the outer fairing back on. But before we do that, we need to replace the support bracket that went on top of the radio. This bracket's gonna go on with the curved part facing towards the top of the bike. That tightened down, let's grab the outer fairing. Go ahead and grab one of the screws for the top. Go ahead and gently slide this back on. That one screw for the windshield here. I'm gonna go ahead and start it just a little bit just so that the fairing will hang. Now we'll free our hands up to reconnect the little wiring harnesses here that we disconnected earlier. And move back down here to where the turn signals are just so that we can hold the bottom of the fairing together. So grab the two silver screws and we'll go ahead and replace those. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now that we have that secured, we can go ahead and take out the one that we had up here on the top, holding the top of the fairing in. Go ahead and grab our vent piece. Make sure the lip is tucked up under the inner fairing. Grab our windshield. Grab our other trim piece. We're gonna grab our two screws that go down here in the lower portion of the fairing. Now that we have that one back in place, repeat the process on the other side. Two more screws to replace. These go in the speaker openings. Now that the bike is completely reassembled, there's only one thing more to do, and that's check out our new Soundstream head unit. Let's fire up the new Soundstream and we'll do a quick walkthrough about all of the great features that this is gonna bring to your bike. Go ahead and put it in accessory power. So as you can see why it's kind of starting up here, uh, all of the button backlight colors are changing. That's kind of a demo mode that it's set in, but you can set it almost any color. This bike is red and black, so we can set the backlight of the buttons to red, which will look sweet. You can also change the wallpaper background, both of the head unit and in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually do that. I grab my, grab my phone. I'm going to use the factory USB located in the cubby. I'm going to go ahead and hook my phone up and see Apple CarPlay has already popped up. Uh, so a lot of great features here. You can see you got Google Maps. On the left side of the screen here, you have the last three applications that you had open. Uh, if you hit the eight squares here, it takes you back to the home screen of Apple CarPlay. And then as you can see the different icons, you have your phone, you have Apple Music, you have Apple Maps, messages, uh, you have streaming services such as podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, Pandora, all of your major listening platforms as well as your major mapping platforms, Google Maps, Maps.me, you can even run Waze on here uh, Zoom, I guess, if you wanted to make a Zoom call. A lot of great functionality. You're gonna have all of your, your mapping function. If you get a message, it's gonna pop up on your head unit. You're on your bike, so obviously you can choose whether you wanna to reply to that person or not. Uh, that's completely up to you. So a large, large improvement in the amount of technology over the factory head unit that we took out. Um, like I said, customizable. I am connected through the cord to my phone. However, we do have a wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto adapter available at checkout. Uh, they're real small, they plug right into the USB, they'll fit great here in the cubby. So uh, if you don't want your phone out on your handlebars, or you wanna leave it in a saddlebag or in your bag, and you wanna connect wirelessly to your new Soundstream head unit, you can absolutely do that. Uh, let's, we'll go back to the home screen of, of the actual unit itself. Uh, we'll take a look at motorcycle info. The tire pressure showed up. Uh, I do have a check engine light because it's saying check oil because the bike's not currently running. Uh, you have voltage meter, um, all sorts of like great stuff right here at your fingertips. Uh, we'll go to gauges, miles per hour, RPM. Again, another battery voltage, intake temperature, your twist grip percentage. That's kind of an interesting new one. Uh, you go to the second screen, you can track your zero to 60 times, your quarter mile times, again, miles per hour, intake temp. So a lot of really great vehicle diagnostics 
that you might or might not have had before. Uh, and it all shows on the super crisp seven inch capacitive touchscreen. This is a great upgrade. You saw how easy it was to install. So if you wanna pick one of these up for your 2014 and up touring motorcycle, go ahead and pick one up at the shop at www.notecycles.com. And like always, have a blast out there. Yeah.